So the Crimson King structure deck released everywhere today and the question on everyone's lips is, well, is it any good? And as someone who has played with it a bunch, I will say yes, but I'll go over why shortly. Join me as I play 30 duels with Red Dragon Archfiend in 2023 and we'll see if this is a meta deck or will it just be a rogue deck. Briefly, let's go over what Red Dragon Archfiend is. Red Dragon Archfiend is a Sino Dragon and the ace monster of Jack Atlas, with it debuting in 2008's The Duelist Genesis, which was the first set in the Yu-Gi-Oh 5D series. It has seen Rogue play at best, never really topping any major tournaments. Part of this is due to support being split between three categories of monsters, the original 5D's card and its evolutions or variants, the 5D's manga cards, and a little bit of Arc 5 support. Many of the spells, traps, and support monsters don't work with all boss monsters, but with the Crimson King structure deck, this will be a tiny bit better. Let's get into the new cards. Starting off with the cover card and the new boss monster, we have Scarred Dragon Archfiend. It will act as your extender and recovery option. Its effect is on screen, but the most important factor is that its effect activates whenever it's moved from the monster zone to the graveyard. Be it sent, destroyed, or tributed, you get to summon a Red Dragon Archfiend from your extra deck. This punishes people who tribute it with a Lava Golem or a Kaiju, but this also works if you use it as Synchro Material. It will also destroy all attack position monsters your opponent controls. Next up, we have Soul Resonator. The archetype was in desperate need of a one card starter, and this is it. When you normal or special summon it, you get to add one level four or lower fiend card from your deck to your hand. This could be a Resonator or any of the generic fiend monsters, but you want to get Bone Arch Fiend. If it's in the graveyard, you can remove it from play to prevent the destruction of your cards as long as you control RDA or a monster that mentions it. Bone Arch Fiend is next, and you'll see why. You can summon him by sending a card from your hand or field to the graveyard, and he can be summoned either from the hand or graveyard. Once summoned, his second effect lets you send a card from your hand or deck to the graveyard and increase or decrease one monster's level on your side of the field. This is best done on itself or Soul Resonator to Synchro Scarred Dragon Arch Fiend. Vision Resonator is the target for Bone Archfiend's effect, as when it's discarded, you can add one card that mentions RDA to your hand from your deck. This includes all four new spells and traps, and Soul Resonator. You can also special summon Vision Resonator if a level 5 or higher dark monster is on the field. As for the spells, there's two new ones. Crimson Gaia allows you to search one card that mentions RDA per turn, or grab it from the graveyard. It also lets you flip all monsters your opponent controls face down when RDA attacks and this can wipe up to 6 monsters in one attack. Lastly, when a card is destroyed by an effect or battle, you can special summon 1 RDA from your graveyard. Absolute Power Force is the underdog in the deck. You can target 1 RDA and it will gain effects when it battles until the end of the damage step. It gains 1000 attack, your opponent can't activate cards or effects, defense position monsters receive piercing damage, and battle damage from that battle is doubled. It can seriously mess up your opponent, especially as many cards have low defense. There's also two new traps. Red Zone is the better of the two and is a continuous trap. If your opponent activates a card or effect when you have RDA on the field, or a monster that mentions it, you can target one card on the field and destroy it. You can also special summon a Dark Dragon Synchro monster that is banished once per turn. It's a good punishment card, but works best with Red Nova and Red Supernova Dragon. This allows you to use their effects up to twice per turn, on each yours and your opponent's turn. Fiendish Golem is easily the worst new card, and probably not worth playing. You can banish one monster on the field with 2,000 or more attack until the end of the next turn. If you have Red Dragon Archfiend on the field, you can also set Fiendish Chain. It's just a bit slow and requires three cards to use its maximum potential. I couldn't really fit it into my list. With that being said, here's the list I ended up with after those 30 duels. I'll briefly go over them. So for the main deck monsters, we've got 3 Earthbound Stone Sweeper, 1 Santa Claus, 2 Wandering King Wild Wind, 2 Ash Blossom, 3 Soul Resonator, 3 Vision Resonator, 2 Crimson Resonator, 2 Bone Arch Fiend, 2 Black Queen Chinook the Snowblast, you understand why in the end. We've got 2 Dark Ruler No More, 1 Foolish Burial Goods, 2 Lightning Storm, 3 Resonator Core, 1 Scarlet Security, 3 Small World, 2 Triple Tactics Talent, 1 Absolute Power Force, 2 Crimson Gaia, and for the traps we have 1 Red Rain, 1 Time to Stand Up, and 1 Red Zone. Moving swiftly onto the extra deck, we've got 1 Hot Red Dragon Archfin King Calamity, no we're not using him to stunlock people, we have 1 Red Supernova Dragon, 1 Red Nova Dragon, 1 Bestial Disparter, 1 Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Bane, 1 Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss, 2 Red Dragon Archfiend, 1 Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend, 2 Scar Dragon Archfiend, 
one Black Wing Dragon, one Ancient Pixie Dragon, and two Red Rising Dragon. The text list will be in the description for you to copy and edit to your heart's desire. With the side deck, just pick whatever staples you want. The first matchup is going to be against Dark World, and we're going second. Cool. I have no fucking idea how the deck works, but that's okay. We have monsters with big attack points. Essentially, they do a big long combo only to end up on Hope Harbinger for a negate, and Saryu just Skull Dread, hoping he can get us on turn 3. Too bad for them. It's our turn and we draw another Resonator Call, and now we have enough gas to clear. I opt with a small world to bait out the Harbinger spell negate, and it's taken. Now I go for Resonator, and no Ash, meaning we can now pop off. I grab Soul Resonator and then Crimson Resonator. We get a free special summon with Crimson Resonator here and go for a normal summon for Soul Resonator. Soul lets us grab the new Bone Archfiend. We'll ditch one King Wild Winds to summon Bone Archfiend and then one Vision Resonator to let us search for Crimson Gaia. We'll get Scarlet Security back from the graveyard, then it's time for Scarred Dragon Archfiend. This will allow us to pop off Scarlet Security and get Red Rain back. Activating Crimson Resonator's effect, we get two more Vision Resonators and now it's time to end this. It's King Calamity next to lock out our opponent and get another Red Dragon Archfiend then wipe their board with Scar's effect. We're going second against Labyrinth on game two, and that sucks monkey balls. And it's a really annoying build too. The opponent sets four and passes. Fuck it, we'll play it, our hand is decent. They start with goes in match, and that is usually GG, but Soul Resonator is the only non-dark card here, so we have some fuel in the tank. I'll grab Crimson Resonator and Nell flip Skill Drain. <sighs> Basically, we both get shitty draws and neither of us play very well. In the end, I won due to Red Dragon Archfiend being a big old beat stick. Moving on to Duel 3, for the third time in a row, we're second and this time it's against Live Twin. Ugh, at least they're more legal than Trap Tricks. Our opponent does some Live Twin shit, who cares, we have big attack points. They actually do a really good job of stopping me from playing, but I think the turn 1 Ash might have saved me here. They Ash my Soul Resonator, so I set 2 and Special Wild Wind and then I'll summon Ancient Pixie in defense mode, then pass. They end with Trouble Sunny, destroying my Pixie Dragon. I try another Soul Resonator and it gets stopped by Ghost Ogre. I'm up Shit Creek with Nary a Paddle. I'll summon Bone Archfiend to cushion the life points and grab a Crimson Gaia, allowing me to get a Soul Resonator if I survive. The opponent just goes for a normal summon and into the battle phase, and we might win now. Let's get Bone Archfiend back and summon Soul. Bone lets us get Scarlet Security. Red Dragon Archfiend is summoned and we attempt Scarlet, to which they use both Runic Smiting Storm and Freezing Curses, but we have Red Rain. Red Rain protects Red Dragon Archfiend and they go for the mill instead. But they have no field, one card and we have plenty left. Wandering King Wild Wind and Vision Resonator get summons to go into Red Rising and then into Scarred, giving us Red Rain back again. They summon two live twins, but fuck you, I have Red Rain again. They understand I have Red Rain and Scoop. GG's again, on to Duel 4. Match number 4 is us going second again and we have to deal with Chimera, but who cares, I have big attack points. Ugh, long story short, they so horrendously shut me down that I do sweet fuck all for the entire game. Partially because I don't read and partially because they have so much gas. There were several negates, they hand ripped, they stopped me searching, and I just didn't have the right levels to make Red Dragon Archfiend. This deck will suffer if you have to play with Hot Red Dragon Archfiend, as almost none of the support will apply to it. But the deck would be broken if that was the case. GG to this guy, he clearly knew his deck. In Duel 5, finally we get to go first and it's against Fluanda Rees. They open up with Dimension Shifter, so fuck me I guess. I have a good hand but I can't really play around it, so I'll just make Ancient Pixie and pass. The opponent does their birdie combo and ends with Pingu and the map from Dora. We can break this board. I'll start with Santa Claus to club Pingu and now I can start building RDA. I go for Crimson Resonator and then Bone Archfiend, use Bone Archfiend to get Crimson Gaia and level it up to level 5. Then Crimson will get Soul Resonator, Normal Summon Soul Resonator, Synchro into Scar Red Dragon Archfiend, use Crimson to get more tuners and prep to go into King Calamity but the opponent surrendered. In Duel 6 we're second yet again, this time we're facing Elditch and Horus. I know the Horus cards are good but holy shit. Our opponent starts by dropping the back row, 2 Elditch and 3 Horus cards. I can break this with my hand, but as soon as Soul Resonator goes down, then Skill Drain gets flipped and it's 90 night for me. I think I'll just scoop, their plan was clearly just to summon 5 big hitters then lock you out of play. In Duel 7 we're going first, but we have the shittiest hand known to man. I just special and set, then pass. Our enemy is playing Sky Striker, so we should be able to win. They go all out and summon some Sky Striker stuff and pass to me. I have enough gas to play through this, so I make Red Rising, which they snatch, I then make another, go into Red Dragon Archfiend, and I get fucking Nibiru'd. 
Then they have change of heart and grab my token. That's an insta scoop right there. Dual eight is against Makanko and because I can't read, we get slapped. They beat us fair and square and Makanko is great for one turn killing monsters with big attack points, which we apparently have. Dual nine, we have Labyrinth again. We go first but get evenly matched and they set four. We can't really do much about this. Dual 10 marks our sixth loss in a row with an opponent with just enough in the hand to stop us. Dogmatica is still a good deck with punishment just taking us out. Dual 11 is our redemption arc. Our opponent is playing a psychic punk pride deck somehow. Either way, we have so much fuel in the tank. We play through the Ash Blossom and end with King Calamity, Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Bane, Scarred Dragon Archfiend with Crimson Gaia and Red Zone. Really, I don't know what the plan was for them. We just tear them to pieces. Match number 12 sees us come up against Machina and they do a good job of breaking our weak board. Win with Scar, Dragon Archfiend and Archfiend Bane. They end up getting Super Dreadnought Lieb and beating our beat sticks. 6,000 attack is going to be hard to beat. We end up getting an Archfiend Abyss and an Absolute Power Force. Abyss negates the Lieb, so it goes down to 4,000 defense and Absolute Power Force will make RDA have 4,000 attack. RDA attacks, Lieb is flipped down by Crimson Gaia and destroyed by RDA's effect allowing us to summon Scarred from the grave. They surrender after a negate on their next turn. Duel 13, I go first and end on a weakish end board. The opponent uses Harpy's Feather Duster, but I banish Soul Resonator and that prevents my back row from being destroyed. They just surrender there and then. Duel 14 is a weird floodgate. They're trying to cook with Eater of Millions, but I guess goes nowhere. We have a boring slanging match and I win because I can synchro. Duel 15, the opponent just ran the clock down when they saw my combo was going nowhere. Absolutely maidenless behaviour. Duel 16 was the revenge match against Makanko. They do a really good job of breaking my board, but don't have enough to OTK, and even RDA will beat Makanko if you take advantage of their flaws. They get rid of Scarred and Bane, but we have far too much recovery and the deck shines here. Crimson Guy lets us get Scarlet Security. Our cheeky little, not even really synchro rumble brings back an RDA, allowing for Scarlet Security to be played, but it doesn't matter. Oheim uses its effect and allows Red Zone to trigger, meaning she is done. And that also lets me get Scarred back. With no board and no cards in hand, it's GG's. Duel 17 is Mekanko again. They go second in Kaiju Scarred Dragon Archfiend, causing Red Dragon Archfiend to pop out. But that's all they really do. We have plenty available. It's 99 for Makanko again. Duel 18 was Dinos. They get a really good board off and have Evil Zardolka, which has two negates. There is nothing we can really do about this, so we just scoop. Duel 19 was against Kashtira, with our opponent going first and having a pretty crappy end board. No Arise Heart means happy days for us, although it's actually not banned yet. We have so much fuel, wipe their board and end with Red Nova Dragon, and Scarred, and Red Dragon Archfiend. They managed to recover, but fuck that, we'll Red Rain them, making sure Red Nova can't be taken out. Then our enemy forgets what Red Rain does, attacks it with Kashtira Fenrir, and ends up losing because he can't banish Red Nova. And that's exactly why I play Red Rain. Duel 20 was pretty boring, it was against Scrap, I essentially Red Rain them at the end of their combo and they fold. Duel 20 21 was against Trap Tricks. Trap Tricks is not my cup of tea. They end up Nibiruing me, which they don't have enough cards to remove it, and allows me to recover and wipe them with another Red Rain. Match 22 was against Kashtira. They ended up on Unicorn and Shangri Era and set quite a few cards. Lightning Storm wipes the back row and they see my combo starting, they fold. Duel 23, the file didn't save properly and I was against Branded. I surrendered at some point, you know, a typical Branded going first match. Duel 24 was me going against Labyrinth and I had a shit hand. I just surrendered after getting impermed on turn 1. If I had this hand on turn 2, I probably would have won due to Santa Claus and Lightning Storm. Duel 25 was another trap tricks and was drawn out again. They kept banishing my Red Dragon Archfiend but couldn't quite grasp what Red Zone does. In the end, I just went fuck it. With no monsters but plenty in the tank, I comboed into Red Supernova to see how they enjoyed being banished. Red Supernova takes out, uh, the blue one. Who cares about these children? That triggers my Crimson Gaia for my Scarred to come back, and a nice little absolute power force will see the end of the last Trap Tricks match for this deck. Duel 26 was branded Beastial and my opponent surrendered. I don't get how they folded when I hit him with Scarlet Security. Duel 27 was Utopia and they surrendered when I ashed their first card. This bloke was basically all of us at one point or another. Fair play. Duel 28 was Inferno Ball post Duelist Nexus. They were beating me but the clock ran down, so I'm not counting this as a dub because they probably needed to take a dump or something. Duel 29 was pearly and I went first into Red Supernova. I banished their little gatitos and then they tried to relinquish me, to which I banished again thanks to Red Zone. 
Turn 3 saw me return Supernova and begin with a Crimson Gaia, to which they nope the fuck out. Duel 30 was against Galaxy, which is another beatdown deck. They do a really good job of breaking my board, not that it's strong or anything, but on turn 3 I have far too much recovery in my hand, with me ending on Red Dragon Archfiend, Scarred, Bane and Abyss before they surrender. It just proves Red Dragon Archfiend is the superior beatdown deck. As a consolation to the Inferno Ball Lads IBS, we've got a bonus duel and it's against Unchained. They go first too. I didn't really read the cards because on my turn, I Lightning Storm them, and that allows them to bring three doggos back. After reading the blue one, I realise I need to negate it or it will link summon with my special summon, so I use the newly added Blackwing Chinook the Snowblast for a cheeky little negate. With Soul Resonator in hand, it's all too easy, with an end board of Scarred, Red Dragon Archfiend, Bane and Red Rising able to clean up really easily. So out of the final results across 30 duels, it ended with me getting 21 wins and 9 losses, which isn't too bad for a deck which is a juiced up structure deck and has never been meta at all. Overall, I think the deck's biggest strengths are the battle phase. With the two new spell cards, Red Dragon Archfiend probably is the best we've seen for a while. The recovery for this deck is great, with Crimson Gaia, Red Zone, Bone Archfiend and Scar Dragon Archfiend being the bread and butter. If you are allowed to get to the battle phase, which is very uncommon in Yu-Gi-Oh!, you have so much damage at your disposal and the ability to clear a board with one attack. The deck's combo lines are super simple, but offer enough flexibility to pull off your end board easily. The other thing I like about this support is that it makes the deck so consistent. Yes, Earthbound Stone Sweeper and Synchro Rumble aren't out in the TCG yet, but with Soul Resonator, Bone Archfiend, Crimson Gaia and Resonator Call, you have 12 cards there that can set up your combo. The deck goes quite well against Ash and Negate when setting up combos due to the amount of search cards available. What I do not like about the deck is how little negates you have. Without having 3 infinite impermanents, this deck has 1 negate and that's Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. What's worse is that all the search potential takes up space for generic negates and staples. Playing Imperm can cause it to be more bricky, but it might work. Chinook the Snowblast is a good option because it becomes a quick effect when you have a Dark Dragon Synchro Monster, but requires Blackwing Dragon to be in the extra deck. Not that you can't summon it or anything, it's just pretty useless in this deck. But I do think it's worth having that hand negate. The other thing that prevents the deck from being amazing is the relatively weak end board. There just isn't enough fuel to get the variety of monsters needed to make it amazing. It's basically impossible to get a Red Nova, Supernova, Red Dragon Archfiend and Abyss on the board on turn 1. The issue is compounded by many of the boss monsters not being supported by the new support. Do Konami go too far and allow cards like Red Supernova access to Crimson Gaia and Absolute Power Force? I think that would be broken. But the deck still lacks the definitive boss monster to tie all the sub archetypes together. I would love to see a retrain of Majestic Red Dragon to add some negate support since Red Nova is a magnet for negate. Overall though, will this deck be topping tournaments? Probably not, but it will be a rogue deck we definitely see more. I've seen people playing Resonator Bestials, but I don't think that deck is as good as this one, or at least just the Resonator pure support. I will say though, as much as I love Red Dragon Archfiend, it is an incredibly fun deck and it's different enough to be fun to play with. And I think how fun a deck is can mean a lot more than how meta it is. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please hit subscribe and drop a like for more deck previews and breakdowns, with other breakdowns coming very soon. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.